Well, this is a really cool group of people to sit down with and a really cool conversation to have. My team and I have decided to partner with Sunfeast for this particular campaign because it's about our moms. But I first want to introduce to you the uh, lovely group of people we've put together to have this conversation with. Uh, Tiska Chopra is an author and a filmmaker who's written some fantastic books. I really enjoy uh, the work you've done. Soha Ali Khan, brilliant um, actor and author yourself. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Dia Mirza, we've sort of uh, held hands through our new parenting process. Uh, so it's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Dia is also a champion for uh, Mother Earth and for wildlife, uh, something that I uh, really admire her for. And Dr. Sagar Mundara, who is a uh, psychiatrist and a de-addiction specialist. I want to start by, you know, quickly asking each of you, we live in um, a world that I've now realized as a mom, you know, basically multitasking is like a whole other thing, right? The number of things that you're doing in your head at one point. What do you do at the end of the day to sort of decompress and just give yourself that emotional, emotional care? I've recently started uh, journaling at night. Okay. Uh, that's something that uh, sort of allows me to look at my day and sort of become a third person um, fly on the wall in my own life. What do you do at the end of the day? Um, I'm, uh, I really don't have an end of the day. It's sort of, I fall asleep, I think, and I'm just like, just oh, drop. the day has ended. You yeah. know, there was a time when I used to stay up late and watch movies mm. and, you know, I feel quite sad. And I think we come back when the children get older um, because I am so... Most days. Obsessed with my child. I'm saying most days, yeah. yeah. But I enjoy uh, spending time with her. So I want to get up when she gets up. For me, mm. this... Uh, has brought me closer to my own mom, mm. the whole parenting thing, because I so A, have more appreciation for what she did. I turn to her more often for advice and just generally spending time with her for me sort of, you know, has unlocked maybe stuff that you when we are teenagers, we're a little bit sort of pulling away from our parents. Yeah. Becoming a parent myself has brought me closer to my mom. But um, has it in any way or, you know, you, spending time with your own mother, has that changed recently? Um, for me, it was, it was a physical thing. My parents actually moved from Delhi to Bombay and uh, they're actually just a, a few floors below uh, us. You. So for me, it's it's a huge support system because Tara goes to Nani house and the parathas get made and you know, whatever else that she needs to have uh, gets gets done. But I also see very, very crucially that my daughter uh, sees my bond with my mother and she gets a sense of roots. She gets a sense of that this is what Nani means to my mom. And so that whole sort of uh, triad gets completed in a sort of, th there isn't anything that's comparable to it. it it's sort of very complete and solid, that, mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. circle of three women of three different ages. I can't explain it any better, except that it feels like that's the natural order of things and that's how it ought to be. And when you see the three of us sitting, doing a doing card game or you know, uh, doing some artwork or whatever, then it's, it's a very precious, very complete, your, your soul feels like it's been uh, anchored back into the center of the earth. Mm. I don't know, it's, it's a sort of a very different, different Actually, kind of a feeling. Really beautiful way to put it. You just got back from spending time with your mom. I did. As Instagram tells us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I still miss her. <laughs> I do. I've become very um, aware. I think when you lose someone close in your life, like when I lost my father, I became very, very aware that the most important thing is time mm. with loved ones and that you're never going to get back. And ever since that happened, I've made sure to make time. And, as, and I said other things have suffered and I really, that doesn't bother me at all. My mother, I probably ignored when I became a mother. Because I was that person who had a child later in life who became obsessed with her child. And now I think after two or three years uh, into being a parent, I remembered her. And also there was also a health scare and things like that. And I just remembered that, you know, she's of a certain age. She, you know, we talk about this often. She's like, you know, I need to renew my visa. I'm not going to get a 10 year visa. You know, things like that. We have conversations like that. And I remember that it's very important for me to spend time with her and for her to spend time with Anaya and to be able to impart all those amazing things because she's an incredible woman. You know, it's very important because she will be gone at some stage and I may not have be able to do that. So I make sure that we all, this triad, uh, you know, we, we get together and there are others, brothers mm -hmm. and husbands mm -hmm. and all <laughs> who are part of it as well. But you know, this, this trinity yeah. is very important. It is. 
Yeah. Dia, yeah, you, uh, you, your son spends a lot of time with your mom. Do you get enough time to sort of hug her? <laughs> <laughs> My mom, I sometimes feel like our umbil- umbilical cord was never, you know, cut because I've just had an intensely uh, close relationship with her my whole life and so much so that uh, when I lost my father I made sure she moved to Mumbai and she was living with us and it's, we're inseparable and I don't think I would be able to do half of what I'm able to if it wasn't for her so she's my spine um, she's my conscience and uh, she's my mirror and she is uh, incredible with Avyan and uh, she spends close to seven, eight hours a day with him, sometimes even more, and loves it. And I think she chooses to. I don't expect her to, but she wants to, because I think she recognizes that her time is finite. And I think it's, it's as heartbreaking as that is, and we can never be certain of you know how much yeah. time we have. But I think she's acutely conscious of it. And therefore, she tries to spend as much time as she can with him every single day. And it's a beautiful bond to just witness her with my child and uh, just see how she is even yeah. with Samira. I think it's precious. And the fact that, um, you know, we get that time as mothers to spend time together. So uh, there is this video that, uh, you know, that's been put together that I'd like to show you guys. <laughs> हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम आज हम एक एक्सपेरिमेंट करने वाले हैं मेरे दोस्त प्रणव के साथ कि लोगों को खुश क्या करता है आजकल बट हमारे पास एक सिंपल सा ब्रेन एक्टिविटी ट्रैकर इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ अ हैप्पीनेस मीटर ठीक है ये आपके सर पे लगा देंगे हमारे भाई निमिष जो तुम करते हो दिनचर्या में वो करना मैच देख रहे हो या अपने पोस्ट कर रहे हो रेगुलर जो भी जो अपना रेगुलर चलता है वो ठीक है एक बार देखना चाहता हूँ मैं कि भाई कितना हैप्पीनेस कहाँ से क्या मिल रही है तुम्हें ये इसके साथ ब्लूटूथ से कनेक्टेड है कुल काफी इंटरेस्टिंग लग रहा है तो ये जो कैमरा है ना यहाँ लगे रहेंगे ठीक है ठीक है मैं और हमारा क्रू चला जाएगा कुल अब तू चिल कर कल मिलते हैं जिसकी वजह से आपके यहाँ पे ग्राफ में कुछ टेंशन आ गए दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग आई थिंक मुझे कॉल है ठीक हुई हेलो मैम नमस्ते नमस्ते ब्रेन वेव डायलेशन हियर इन देयर सो शी इज योर नेस शुड आई गेट अप यू कैन डू यू कैन जस्ट सेंड इट वॉकिंग वॉकिंग चलिए अब यहां पे करीब 1.5 घंटा काफी ऐसे ऊपर नीचे ऊपर नीचे रहा हम्म हां ब्रो मैच ब्राजील बाकी दिन वे उस टाइप का हम सबको कौन है बता गाइस दैट्स माय मम नमस्ते नमस्ते आदित्य आंटी आई है तो झप्पी पाओ यार ढंग से मिलो इट वर्क ब्रो आइए ना आंटी प्लीज बैठिए एम आई मिसिंग समथिंग लुक एट दैट यार इट डज वर्क आई थैंक यू व्हाट कॉल इट के लिए हमने एक्सपेरिमेंट किया था यहां से लेके यहां तक ये आप लोगों ने एक हद किया बाकी पूरे दिनचर्या इसकी आज कल मिला के इतना स्पाइक नहीं हुआ कोई कंपैरिजन ही नहीं है यार कैन यू बिलीव दैट कब हद किया था लास्ट मंथ में तो पता नहीं कब किया था आंटी इसने आपको लास्ट टाइम बताओ बचपन में जब स्कूल से आता था आते ही उसे चिपक जाता था 
और सब सेल पे फंस पर अब बहुत बिजी रहता है क्या हो जाता है ना बच्चे बड़े हो जाते हैं तो फिर ऐसा हक वक करना थोड़ा सा कम कर देते हैं क्यों नो बट इट्स अमेजिंग हाउ मेनी पीपल लिव लाइक दस मीन वी आर सो फॉर्चुनेट आई तो So, so the, the, there's also research that's done where they did a survey and they found out that 50% of the people felt that they don't hug their moms as much as they could, even if they're in the same house mm-hmm. or you know, since they they grew out of childhood basically, they, and just hugging your mom, just the physical activity, just hugging your mom can help you just feel better. Oh, if you absolutely. Right under our noses the whole time. Yeah. No I mean I think we are so fortunate to have our mothers and yeah. uh, I feel so fortunate in fact my husband keeps saying it because he's been li- he's lived away from home since he was 19 and uh, he hasn't had the benefit of face time in person time with his parents the way I've had right and I'm so grateful to my mother to for making that choice to uproot herself yeah. literally and move to a new city and make a new life because I was here Mm-hmm. and and i think that's it's it's a sacrifice in itself for her to have done that of course she always says that my home is where you are at but um it's just the most incredible thing to have a parent and to have a parent close to you it makes a huge difference and those hugs are magic yeah those hugs are magic <laughs> yeah i'm not a, a a very um demonstrative person i think with my affections I've always sort of been a little reticent and very like mm-hmm. controlled with my emotions and I love hugging Inaya and I saw you know how important that was to do um mm. and I don't think I mean I, I haven't thought about how long a period went by that I didn't hug my mother we don't live in the same city I also moved out of uh, my parents home when I was 17 and haven't really lived there since then but when we do see each other you know it's it's so nice Uh, to be physically yeah. you know close to someone i mean you know, she's worn one perfume her whole life and i can remember that perfume and it's it's just it's something happens to you i'm sure hormonally as well mm-hmm. you know so it's yeah, a, a chemical smell, reaction yeah, yeah. i'm sure um but it's just but i'm saying even to allow yourself to feel that requires my personality to put themselves out there because i yeah. don't enjoy being so vulnerable all the time yeah. Yeah. are you a hugger <laughs> do you hug I'm, your mom i'm uh, i've become a hugger Yeah. ever since tara happened to us uh, i've become a hugger and um, like so how i relate uh, hard to the fact that you know i like to keep my emotions a little sort of um, a, a lid on them almost but with tara i uh, it's it sort of just comes out and i oxytocin is uh, <laughs> apparently the the chemical that's released i had to check I have to check <laughs> which hormone is released yeah. when said hug happens. The happy yeah. hormone. The, yeah. the happy yeah. hormone. <laughs> yeah, endorphins and oxytocin and all of that. I find that uh, uh, I write a lot. Uh, a large part of my day is spent writing. So when she comes back from school, I make it a point to uh, to sort of you know be there. Uh, I come come down from um, office to home and, and I s- sit with her and I hug her and I find out about her day and that hug I see that you know your your mind gets into a kind of a lock jam you feel that all your nerves are sort of stretched tight because you've sort of exhausted your brain so much and after I hug her I sort of actually feel nerve endings sort of start to loosen up and you know it's 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 an entirely different feeling mm-hmm. so um it's 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 fantastic what what uh, nature has engineered here uh, yeah. in in terms of uh, hugs equal happiness you know i was having a conversation with someone who said that uh, i walk into the house and my mom's there and i instead of spending time with her go into my room shut the door and i'm scrolling through my phone so with in modern i know in modern day you have people looking for that happiness in other places Correct. in yeah. you know Correct. on social media by watching a show by whatever else it is whereas there is a a nature given sort of you know happiness true, dose true, sitting true. right it's there it's a very right? pertinent question and uh, you know people i think have started confusing happiness with the thrill that they are seeking when you're on social media or when you're doing something that really excites you 
a different chemical so to say is getting released that is dopamine that is let's mm. say you eat something that you really like you don't feel content you feel wow that is what you feel people are running behind that mm. when you hug your mother the feeling is that of you know you feel very content you feel at peace you feel relaxed yeah. Yeah. that is more of the oxytocin the serotonin that will just calm you down make you feel thankful grateful blissful what people are searching for these days is they are confusing that content feeling that happiness feeling with a thrill with a pleasure so you're confusing happiness with pleasure mm. and when you're just mindlessly scrolling most of the people unfortunately do that they're mindlessly yeah. Yeah. scrolling on social media their brain is getting that thrill because you're getting something new every time you're you're just scrolling for something new on your mobile and that is very addictive you can hug your mother 100 times that won't become an addiction you will you will like shouldn't it shouldn't it be though it should be <laughs> it would be the most healthy healthy thing to happen but yeah. unfortunately that's another point that is you know you said uh, as we outgrow and become adults so called adults we don't hug our mothers or we don't don't express our love that much that is also somewhat related to kind of conditioning that happens in our uh, society yeah. it is uh, you are not supposed to show a uh, physical love to your parents and that is considered in many parts of our country still a sign of obedience a sign of being respect. a good respect respect very true a sign of uh, being an obedient or a respectful daughter or a son which is very sad mm -hmm. but nature as she very beautifully said it you know hugs equal to happiness nature has designed it that way if mm. you think of it when you have a very very small child now that i have one of my own i know he or she is totally dependent on you if you think logically you should not feel any reason to take care of it because you have to take because everything you have to do for it right from the potty training to feeding to everything so it is somewhat of an exercise <laughs> if you remove the emotion of love from there yeah it's a lot if yeah it's a lot so yeah. that oxytocin that she is talking of and i'm so happy that she you know read up uh, all of that and <laughs> that's that's really wonderful that oxytocin is what creates that bond yeah that is why we say when the child is born let there be physical uh, body touch between the mother and the child as soon as possible mm. because then you have that bolus dose that that uh, uh, lots of oxytocin flowing in the Uh, blood of the mother and she starts developing a connection with the child otherwise just imagine you have gone through it you are not able to sleep properly through the night mm -hmm. you have to keep feeding you have to do everything for the child logically mm -hmm. speaking nobody do it but that really hormone possible, yeah. that nature has given ah, us that's what we are doing so that's that's <laughs> that's <a> evolutionary <laughs> prerogative it's it's amazing it's amazing that one hormone makes us do all of that and that is why our species is continuing otherwise you know many people wouldn't do it yeah so basically so you have many we, mothers you have many mothers you're saying who, even when the baby grows up hmm. and now is like out in the world and working and hmm. scrolling through their phones hmm. that oxytocin is still available it is still and you available can free it of cost you need to, yeah unlimited <laughs> amounts yeah. so put your phone down and hug your mom true <laughs> true true do you think yeah, that it's important for us to also you know somehow communicate to our children that that oxytocin is available and we're here if you need us but like sofa said that we're not you know sort of a helicopter uh through life as well because your mom's been available to you like you said um is there a way to pass that on now so in my case even though my mother's lived with me all these years she's always offered me space and i think that's a very powerful thing and it's a great thing that i've learned from her i hope i can continue to you know do that and especially with like we have a teenager at home and she needs um presence but she also needs space mm. and 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 we are actually as parents learning to navigate ourselves around that need so there is there is there are two forms of parenting right one is presence and one is um form where you're saying have you done your homework have you brushed your teeth have you had your bath uh, things yeah. like that yeah. where you you know it's it's about getting things done or but the presence parenting is where you're listening and you're just being and you're you you're offering space but you're also offering presence and time and i think that's what we're really trying to do here and i hope we can achieve it through life because i think it's very very important and necessary for us to have that an anchoring force in our lives and that's really what our parents are for us right they 
anchor us, they yeah, ground yeah. us, and they give us more than we can ever reciprocate. And um, I hope that we can be there for our children always yeah. and do it with respect. So give them the space that they need to become the people they want to become, make the mistakes they need to mistake, make the choices they have to make. and But just know that you know, if I yeah. ever need yeah. that hug yeah. <laughs> or if I ever need that presence, it's there. So that brings us to the end of this conversation. But uh, as we wrap up, uh, could we all take that pledge? Uh, if you're watching right now, put your phone down and <laughs> hug your mom. <laughs>